Okay, well, welcome everybody. Uh, the, this is your chance as an applicant to kind of get to know us, ask questions, and we're going to take you through a short presentation on uh, the Wolf Center. And this will be a combination of what you will need to know to apply and uh, give you a chance to ask any questions that you have of me, uh, Amanda, the program manager, uh, Melissa here is our uh, conduit for all the administrative aspects. Asha Thomas is going to uh, be here to talk about the academic requirements. Uh, so again, my name is Dave Cook. That's my cell phone number. Anything I can do to help you uh, make sure that you get the best chance uh, to understand this program and to take have a shot at it, <clears throat> I'm here to help. We had a good year. Uh, we were uh, ranked number one in the country by the uh, uh, Princeton Review as an undergraduate program. Um, this is uh, we've been that. Uh, achieved that ranking on number a number of times and it's uh, something we're very uh, proud to have a national recognized program. Uh, in this particular case, we got lots of recognition. Uh, we actually uh, made it onto the football field and that uh, says something in Texas if they uh, recognize you there. This was the new dean. We made it to City Hall. They uh, had a proclamation uh, in our favor. This is the mayor and um, city council. And uh, there are both classes, the senior class and the junior class, along with some of our uh, professors and stakeholders. So it was a it was a good year, good recognition. And uh, and we have um, certainly enjoyed that. Um, here in this session today, <clears throat> what we're intending to do is to uh, express an underlying theme that uh, the Wolf Center is really about you figuring out how to take a product and get it into the market, how to take an idea, but also how to take your life and take control of it. And that if there was one single thing that I think the Wolf Center does is it helps students figure out who they are, where they're going. And uh, today is no different in that this session will be a chance to get to know some folks, understand what's uh, necessary uh, academically to get in, and then to get a thorough understanding of the application process. And finally, to ask any questions that you have. Uh, Amanda is here uh, running it. Melissa is here. I, Asha, are you here? I'm here. Atta girl. <clears throat> so we're going to start with that. And Asha is one of our uh, supporters. She's the academic advisor for the Wolf Center and uh, has answers all the questions and our students have or applicants have in terms of what courses do you have to take, uh, double majors, uh, anything that you want to know academically. And uh, Asha, I'll just, uh, if you snap your fingers, I'll uh, advance the slides as you uh, so require. All right, sounds good. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Asha Thomas. Like Dave said, I am uh, the director of major advising here at Bauer, and I also have the privilege of being the advisor for the entrepreneurship program. So. My sort of role with the admissions process is pretty limited. I sort of do the initial academic review just to make sure that you're in a good position to apply. Um, and then I hand over the hard part to the, the lovely Wolf Center staff to really make those tough decisions. Um, so I just want to cover a little bit about the academic requirements and then give you my contact information in case you all have any questions after today. So students that are applying to the program usually fall into one of these three categories. Um, so the first category is our non-business students. Um, we do have students apply every year that are not currently business majors. So you might be pursuing your degree in another college here at U of H, um, and we still welcome you to apply to the program. What we look for in your case is completion um, or current enrollment in Entrepreneurship 3310. That's our intro to entrepreneurship class. Uh, you also need to be in good standing at the university. That really just means a 2.0 or higher. We want to make sure that no one's on academic probation or anything like that. Um, and then one thing to note for those of you that are not business majors um, is that you will still want to continue your 
degree in whatever field you're getting it in. So if you're doing a degree in psychology or whatever, um, still continue working with that advisor to complete your degree requirements there. Um, if you get into the Wolf Center, you would earn a certificate in entrepreneurship, not the full BBA in entrepreneurship. Um, that doesn't mean that you wouldn't be doing the entire program. So you'll still be doing the same thing that all of the other WC admins are doing, um, all the same opportunities, and you would still be a graduate um, of the Wolf Center along with whatever degree you're pursuing in your other college. Um, so that's just something to note. Um, if you're non-business and you're wanting to get into business, there's a slightly different process for that. So definitely email me if that's your goal. So that way we can make sure we're on the same page and you know everything you need to know about that process. Uh, the second category of students are our declared business majors. So these are students that are already in Bauer um, and are already in one of our majors. So you might be marketing, accounting, finance, and you're looking to add entrepreneurship as a second major. So for that category, you just need to complete or be currently enrolled in Entrepreneurship 3310 um, and be in good standing at the university, which is a 2.0 or higher. Um, and then our third category of students, um, which is probably the majority of students here, are pre-business majors. Um, so those of you that are in Bauer but haven't declared a specific major, same two first requirements. So we need the Entrepreneurship 3310 um, in good standing. Um, and then for this group, we also want you to be on track to file your degree plan or as close as possible by the end of the fall semester. Um, so Dave, if you'll go to the next slide. For those of you that don't really remember what that means, uh, filing a degree plan just means that you have to finish certain requirements um, as a pre-business student in order to declare a major in business. So some of you may be on this 2018, 2019 degree plan. Others of you are on 2019 or 2020 degree plan. Um, but the basic idea is the same. You're gonna wanna aim to complete sections one, two, and three of this degree plan um, by December. So obviously you're already enrolled in your fall classes. So hopefully you're as close as possible to doing that. This isn't a black or white issue for your application. It's just something that um, to keep in mind. So if you're missing quite a few classes from sections one, two, and three, reach out to me so that way we can meet. Um, part of this is just making sure that you're applying at the right time. Um, and so part of finishing certain classes on your degree plan means that you're ready to apply now versus maybe applying next fall. So um, if you're very far from completing these requirements, then definitely reach out to me. If you're just one or two classes, then um, when I review your application, I'll see that and no problem. So just something to consider. Um, Dave, if you'll go to the next slide. Um, so we do all of our academic advising appointments through Navigate. So if you want to meet with me, definitely feel free to schedule an appointment. You log into Navigate, you can select business, entrepreneurship, and you'll see my calendar. Um, if ever you log in and I don't have appointments posted, shoot me an email. Um, and if uh, I can answer your question via email, I will. If not, then we can set up a virtual meeting via email and my email address is on the screen. Um, and then one last note for those of you that are in our Bauer Honors Program, uh, Sarah and Colleen, the Bauer Honors Advisors, are well-versed in this process. They know all about the, the program and double major options and things like that. So you'll continue meeting with them um, and they'll be your contacts all the way through till graduation. Um, like Dave said, one of my roles is to just help you get to graduation. So a lot of our students in the program are doing double majors, minors, all of that. And so I can help you um, look at your options, map it all out, make sure that you're getting to graduation um, on time. So that's what I'm here for. Asha, Asha, thanks so much. Uh, this is her contact information if you want to reach out. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ben. So um, trying to describe what WCE is in a, in a short period of time is very, very difficult. Uh, I've characterized it as trying to drink out of a fire hydrant and um, the, uh, the number of programs, the number of experiences that go on uh, are truly incredible. And what we're trying to do is today, just give you uh, sort of help understanding the process, what you would be getting into and to make a, the best informed decision uh, as you go into the application process and to give yourself the best shot at uh, getting in. It is a program that, you know, our vision is that we want to create entrepreneurs with integrity who can think, lead, and connect. And how we do that is uh, through a, a personal and professional growth of every student in the program and the sort of the process that we use to get and make that happen uh, are number one, the students. The, most of the energy and most of the uh, action that occurs in our program isn't because of something 
a professor or we do. It is picking the right uh, 35, 40 kids, putting them in a situation where they get to interact with each other. And all we do is just create different simulations and experiences. But the uh, most important thing we do is picking the, uh, the students to go into the program. So uh, we split the program equally between uh, business development, classroom, understanding, accounting, and, and uh, marketing, and, and business plans, and so forth. And uh, where we differ dramatically is that we also spend a lot of time in the human development area worrying about uh, leadership, worrying about uh, the ability for students to make good ethical choices. And this balance between a student's head and heart <clears throat> is the, uh, uh, I think the, the thing that differentiates our program uh, most in, in our ability to attract mentors and to uh, have engagement. The uh, classes that uh, Asha alluded to, everybody would pre-requirement would need to take 3310. Uh, that would be the first semester. Typically, we like to get people as they're going into their junior year. And then the second semester, which when you were uh, in the program would begin in January and run through May of the first year, you'd be taking revenue cost and purpose and come back next year in September and take capital leadership and strategy and then graduate in May 22 with uh, a perspectives course, a launch uh, class, and uh, hopefully either uh, launching your own business or being uh, working with uh, a clear path as to where you wanted to go in your career and your life. Uh, we do what any good business school would do. We educate in uh, markets and understanding customers and value propositions. Uh, we really encourage students to have a, a good glimpse of accounting before they get into the program, if they can. It is uh, sort of one of the bedrocks that we use in the discussions in a lot of the, uh, the classroom courses. And then the ability to use a <clears throat> business model canvas or uh, business planning tools, all of that, we do what any good business school would do but we do it from the perspective of an entrepreneur. The other thing we do that is different then is this human development stuff of uh, getting people to look at their values, to uh, have a leadership role. Every student in the program will lead a team and to be able to get in front of uh, large groups of people and make presentations and to connect with mentors and have a sort of a personal board of director and of course, uh, what we're supremely interested in is creating a bonded class where you will have relationships and friendships with the people in this class that will go on uh, long after you leave um, WCE. Um, one thing that is different again is that unlike dealing in a silo where you're, I'm going to worry about marketing or I'm going to worry about sales or whatever, uh, our students are sort of pushed into and nudged into this perspective of thinking like a CEO, where they're interested in everything. Uh, all of the different uh, elements of a business are uh, ones that we want our students to be familiar with. If they're working on a project, we want them to understand all of the different uh, pushes and all of the different forces and, and values that can be uh, derived from thinking like a CEO. And it doesn't really matter what kind of uh, entrepreneur you want to become. Uh, we have, uh, we routinely turn out people in all these different areas. But I think it is important to note that we are an entrepreneurship program and we really want to have, we want to start businesses. We want to make the economy better. We want to create jobs. We want to uh, make a difference in the uh, in the world and in the lives of the people who go to work for the students when they leave our program. Uh, dream teams are something we created a few years ago 
and that is to hold each other accountable for understanding what our students' values are. Uh, each student makes a list of 100 dreams, and then they elicit the support of mentors and these five other people that are on, on a dream team with them to create specific goals and specific outcomes uh, to actually lead students to their dreams. <clears throat> Our program is constantly changing. Uh, in the 12 years I've been associated with it, it's never been the same uh, one year to the next. And this year is no different. Uh, we had a program uh, that we worked with Amazon and because of uh, three or four years of just not being able to get stuff out of China, we have now pivoted and are going to have a totally different approach for you, the, the students in the class of 2022, where we will be dealing with ideas that you come up with. And uh, this summer we did a workshop, which we're going to institute as part of uh, the class of 2022. So a lot of, a lot of things that have uh, uh, been changed every year. I sit down with every student as they graduate, spend an hour with them talking uh, in the way of an exit interview, trying to figure out how can we make this program better. And that every person on this staff uh, every person, every instructor, uh, our collective goal is to keep this program operating in the realm of excellence and to be in that top tier of entrepreneurship programs across the country. When we, uh, when the virus hit, um, you know, we sort of looked at the dream teams as being really important to keep the class together. Uh, but it was more than that. And so we created uh, engagement teams. And this was really a suggestion on the part of the students. Uh, but we had our first uh, meeting with this concept uh, very successfully uh, last night. And creating this sort of focus on how can we, even under these you know, sort of tough times, how can we keep our students connected, create memories and experiences that will uh, endure in their lives and to keep them fully and engaged in a culture of growth and, and development. One thing that uh, one of the teams that we have achieved recognition over the years is our ability to put to, uh, together teams around intellectual property. The University of Houston opens their intellectual property portfolio. Uh, we put the class in teams of five, they select a technology and then they get to go compete with that. Uh, <clears throat> they develop it, they have an exclusive license to, to do it over a period of time. And uh, in that process, one of the outcomes that we hope and we believe is that every student in our program will become a fearless presenter, even if they're deathly afraid of uh, public speaking when they get in or they're not very confident. Uh, this program will, uh, through uh, coaching and through just uh, experience, create a, uh, a different level of confidence for our students to go out into the world. We are very competitive. We have uh, won countless competitions. I love to tell this story. Uh, there's a team of three undergraduate students that went to MIT, finished second place to a team from MIT that was comprised of six PhDs. So over the years, we have had um, wonderful success with this collaboration between our uh, friends in, at the university who have ideas and innovations and our ability to find customers and markets. We have a number of these companies that are still operating and uh, it is a collaboration that we value. This was a, a work we did with uh, NASA. Uh, but at the, at the heart of this is what we try to do is work with real ideas, not uh, hypothetically or let's pretend uh, these are real technologies and we go to banks and we spend the night with real bankers and figure out how would you, uh, how would you apply for a loan? Uh, what is it like uh, in currency trading and get to understand how bankers think so that as you leave this program, 
you have a confidence to understand the financial world, the banking world in a way that is real with real bankers and real experiences. <clears throat> this is our uh, collaboration with Cadence Bank and uh, it has been a wonderful experience over the year. Another thing we do is uh, Porter and Hedges conducts a mock term negotiation where we split the class into teams. A uh, number of the teams have a, uh, are charged with selling their business and the other uh, teams are charged with buying the business. And again, uh, we go into a setting with real bankers, real lawyers, and, uh, and try and negotiate a deal. And can we effectively buy and or sell a business? And what does that process look like? <clears throat> um, this has, again, been a wonderful experience and collaboration that we've been doing for a number of years. And uh, Porter and Hedges are wonderful partners in the, in the process. Uh, we have, over the years, had a vision of um, using Wolffest, which some of you may have been involved in, which was originally set up uh, over the last years to operate pop-up restaurants over a three-day period of time. And the uh, dates uh, for 2021 were, uh, and they will be in first week in April in for you, the class of 2022. And quite frankly, we don't know if this will be the, uh, the format that we use, depending on where we are with the virus. Uh, again, the class is coming up with all different kinds of ideas, but uh, this will give you a flavor for um, what Wolf Fest was and may be. Entrepreneurship keeps America growing. Entrepreneurship keeps America growing. The Wolf Center for Entrepreneurship is an undergraduate program at the University of Houston. I didn't know I wanted to be an entrepreneur until I attended Wolf Fest. I've been able to refine my craft as a business student here at WCE. Take something from the ground up, watch it grow, and be able to make a living off of it. You meet so many new people, you gain so many new experiences. Everyone's out here because they are selling food. This is a startup simulator made into a three-day restaurant pop-up event. 40,000 students walking up and down these sidewalks every day. If they see the food that you're selling, if they see what you have to offer, if they realize how big of a part you play into the growth of University of Houston and Houston itself. We all kind of start out with a plan on what we're going to base our food around, then we develop marketing, then we go out and we find vendors across the city that are willing to help us out. Not only teaching us about academics, but as you can see, they also teach us how to implement things, how to really go out there and do it. So it's not just theory, it's actual application. So that's what WC is meant to me. Wolfest is a chance for us to raise money for students um, for next year's for scholarships, as well as all the money that goes back to us. It funds our graduations and our team building retreats as well. You know, it's an entrepreneurship program that we donate to. and This year we're donating 60%, so come and check us out and support us. It's not what you know, but it's who you know. And knowing these 35 brothers and sisters is what I know is going to make me successful and I'm going to help them be successful. You can't succeed if you've got an army behind you, and really that's what the Wolf Center is. We're a family. We have a great support system. Everybody that is part of it believes in us and, and that's why you should join WCE. Because entrepreneurship is the true passion of building your own business. It's the most amazing experience I could ever ask for. Entrepreneurship keeps America growing. Entrepreneurship keeps America growing. Entrepreneurship keeps America growing. Fest is uh, run by the seniors with the help of the juniors and is sort of the capstone event of their, uh, it's held in April right before the class graduates in May. Uh, it is also a, um, one of the lifeblood financially to make the program, uh, to support the program. It pays for graduation 
uh, pays for retreats and uh, a lot of money goes in to scholarships. The trips that uh, typically we uh, run for the senior class are trips to uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, this was back when uh, a couple years ago when we went to see Warren Buffett, but uh, it is a uh, program that is designed to take you outside the classroom and outside of your comfort zone. And that is really uh, experienced through uh, once a semester, there are retreats, but the um, opportunity for you to sort of dig deep as to who you are and make sure that you're uh, lining up your values and your dreams in a way that leads to <clears throat> a career that has the best life possible for you. Wolf Center for Entrepreneurship has been a program that has opened many doors for, I would say, a lot of students. Typically, when you think of a business organization, you think, okay, they're opening up doors for me professionally. They're helping me network. And what gets overlooked oftentimes, I think, is times like this here at Retreat, where the Wolf Center differs from other programs in, in that they're focused on building people up both personally and professionally. The Retreat function of the Wolf Center is really to help the student um, grow in, in the capacity of who are they. Our whole program is sort of based equally on an academic component and a experiential one. And retreats are clearly one of the most significant experiences that our students go through. Early retreats look at how do you come together as a class, how do you be more vulnerable with other people, how do you realize the, the benefit of a team, how do you put other people before yourself, and while those characteristics are sometimes not ones that someone will associate with an entrepreneur or with someone who's always looking to start a new business, this program makes you really examine that with hopefully the realization that it's not about me, and the moment that I start to make it about something that's bigger, uh, not only do I succeed as an entrepreneur, but um, but also as a person. Retreat has given me the opportunity to become vulnerable with my classmates, and it gives me a platform to be able to share my story. In this environment, we are bonding a lot more with our classmates, so I love how we have all become a little bit more, more vulnerable than what we are accustomed to in a classroom setting, for example. Digging in to why people do what they do and, and kind of how they operate or why they operate, what drives them, what they've been through seeing people for the person, not for the, like, oh, my fellow student, my fellow entrepreneur, but it's like my fellow human being. If you're going to look at becoming an entrepreneur, understanding yourself, understanding how you can operate in a team, and understanding servant leadership as to your responsibility, this sort of um, magic that is the Wolf Center, retreats are at the center of all of that. We have received the number one ranking uh, regularly over the years. Uh, we are uh, competitive with anybody in the country in, in any measure of competitions. We are pride ourselves in the number of businesses that we start. Uh, we absolutely have the best mentoring program of any, any program in the world. Uh, last year, we had 523 mentors come and work with our kids. Uh, this is the induction evening when a uh, senior helps a uh, junior and in incoming student put their jacket on, meet their mentor, and then go through a program that is designed with a series of simulations and experiences and classroom education that is uh, second to none. Um, and this is sort of the measure of success that we, the staff and the professors and I have is, uh, have we changed the lives of the students who are in this program? And as we look at changing those lives, we believe that experience is much more powerful than information. So rather than just sitting in a class and learning, uh, you can tell somebody what it's like to ride an elephant or you can ride an elephant and that that experience 
uh, is so liberating and so empowering that creates an opportunity for students that is uh, unlike anything else anywhere. Uh, we want students to take a risk and we want them to sort of be in this growth uh, sort of exuberant sense of, I wanna see what I can do with my life and to start a lot of things while they're in the program. But we want them to do it with a safety net. We don't want them to lose their family fortune or we don't want them to make mistakes with employees. And so uh, it is a controlled uh, environment with real projects, with real money and uh, real leadership roles. It is a program that demands people to jump higher and do things differently than perhaps they've ever experienced in their life. It is a program that depends so heavily on uh, experiences outside the classroom. And again, we could spend a day talking about uh, all of these, but between the travel, the projects, the mentorships and the orientation, uh, it is a program unlike anything else on earth. Now, when we bring people into the program, we recognize that we're going to ask them to devote an inordinate amount of time, uh, nights, weekends, uh, to a program. And we had trouble in the past in that we had people that were required to work jobs and, and it was sometimes created a hardship. So we put a real effort into creating scholarships. And these are a lot of the uh, endowed scholarships that uh, last year spun off $261,000 worth of scholarships. And if you took our uh, 36 students in the class of 2019 and said, uh, how much were their expenses be? It would have been 259K. So for that class it was the first time ever that we had everybody uh, receive a scholarship. And the class that just graduated, it is the first time at the class that is here now, this is the first class that ever, every student in this class will receive at least a $5,000 scholarship. <clears throat> so uh, a lot of people are investing a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of uh, energy into creating an experience that will bond 35, 40 students together uh, in a, an experience that will change their lives. So this to me is uh, a great opportunity and my advice and my admonition to you is to not, don't self-select yourself out of the process. If you, uh, if you think you have a shot, I would sure take it. And in terms of the application process itself, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Amanda, the program manager and have her walk you through it. But again, anything we can do to help you uh, with a strong application, we're eager to help. Yeah, so applications are finally open. Um, I see that a lot of you have already started your applications, which is super exciting. Uh, remember that they are due September 25th. So that's in about two weeks. Um, so you have two more weeks to finish your application. It is due that Friday the 25th at noon. Make sure you know that it's at noon and not midnight. If you try to submit it past noon, we cannot accept it. Um, as Asha said, remember the only required course is Entrepreneurship 3310. I've had a few questions if some of you can take it during this coming winter mini-mester. Um, I don't think that will work simply because you will find out if you get in the program before you take that course. So if you haven't taken Entrepreneurship 3310, feel free to message um, Asha or myself and we can try to figure that out with you. Um, there are two essays uh, for the application, a three minute YouTube video, a business headshot, and then the interview process. So a lot of you have questions about the YouTube video. If you just go to YouTube and type in Wolf Center, you'll see plenty of videos, plenty of ideas. You don't necessarily know who got in and who didn't based on those videos, but it does give you some ideas of what we're looking for. <clears throat> the main thing we want from your video is I want to feel like we know who you are before you sit in front of us for your interview. So give us a feel of who are you? Give us some background. Where are you from? And then why are you applying to the Wolf Center? Why is entrepreneurship for you? Those are the two big things we want in your video. Um, and please make sure it doesn't 
go well over three minutes because we have to watch a lot of these. Um, that's about all I have for the application process. Do we have any questions regarding the application? Oh, yes, and I'm sorry. The announcement of the new class will be October 30th at noon, most likely on all of our social media platforms. So any questions? Uh, I have a question. Yes. Okay, so is this open to just Bauer uh, students? I'm a liberal studies major, and I don't know if, if this is for me. I have no experience in the business school, or I've never taken a business class. So is this like for everyone? Can I apply to it or no? Yeah, so the program, the application is open to everyone. So as long as you've taken that Entrepreneurship 3310 course, you are eligible to apply. Um, as a liberal studies major, you would still continue working with your advisor there to meet graduation requirements. But if you got into the program, you would complete the Wolf Center classes along with everyone else that gets in um, and graduate from the Wolf Center with a certificate in entrepreneurship. Um, as far as not having any business classes, the, the main challenge would probably be not having that accounting background, um, but it's not necessarily a deal breaker. So I wouldn't let that stop you from applying to the program. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Brandon, you have a question? Uh, yes, I do. Hi, um, my question is about the interview process. Is everyone going to be interviewed or is it going to be like a pre-selection thing? So everyone who passes the initial um, requirements will get an interview. So as long as you have taken Entrepreneurship 3310, you will definitely get an interview. Okay, thank you. I would sometimes. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go on, Melissa. Sorry, I just wanted to add, along with the thirty-three ten uh, requirement, it's also if you have at least a two point five GPA. If you're really close, we might still interview you, but if you're way below that, you're not academically eligible. Um, but otherwise, yes, everyone will get an interview. Perfect. Thank you. Do we have any more questions? Amanda, I see a question in the chat that asks oh, okay. if the program is available to transfers. Um, yes, this is uh, available to transfer students. So those same requirements that we discussed earlier, um, we understand that you wouldn't have a UH GPA yet as a transfer student, and that's fine. Um, we're still able to see your transfer work, and that will, that will do just fine for the application process. Perfect. Any other questions before we do uh, breakout rooms? I have, a, I have a quick question. Um, are the interviews going to be on Zoom or in person? Yes, they will be via Zoom. Okay, cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I got a couple of questions. Go for it. Um, so I know that you guys said that you guys uh, create all different types of entrepreneurs. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious to know exactly how you guys cater to all the different types of businesses out there. How do you help, you know, how do you implement that? Yeah, so, Dave, you want to take that one? I'm sorry? I said, yeah, Dave, you want to take that one? Yeah, so I think the um, uh, what if, if you haven't kind of gotten the flavor, uh, we have sort of an online business that we did with Amazon that we're going to do with um, the uh, innovation project. We have a IP, which is more of a forming around a technology and we have a wool fest which tends to be a retail so as those three different uh, projects and leadership opportunities are going on we also have people starting businesses in the in the current class uh, they started they've started 17 businesses over the summer and these can vary all over the lot they can be uh, lifestyle businesses uh, somebody has a uh, wants to open a dive shop and are they so um, this isn't like you're coming in and committing to uh, I'm going to start a particular business this comes in this encourages students to come in and say whatever kind of opportunity you see in your life you're going to have the basic skills to ask the right questions to, to have the right tools and to have the right relationships to go out and actually start a business. And what we found is that many people come into this program thinking, I know what I want to do. I want to open a custard shop. 
uh, a year later, they're into an entirely different, uh, different industry, different uh, thought process. So I don't know whether that answers your question, but the, the thing that I would say, whatever you decide you want to do, there are, there are mentors and connections and resources that we have to help people do whatever it is they want to do. Okay. Um, and then about the mentors, I was wondering, what's the process of becoming a mentor? Are there like eligibility requirements? How does that work? So um, there are there are ten, literally ten different kinds of mentors, but the most uh, influential and the one that we spend the, the most time with is personal mentors. Uh, the personal mentors, we do background checks. We uh, they have to be referred by somebody. A lot of them are more and more students who have gone through the program and now become alumni and want to come back and uh, have their own businesses and want to make a difference. So uh, I'll give you a couple for instances, those personal mentors are the ones that will come to a meeting every month uh, with the student. They meet at least one other time. They are involved in the student's dreams, their values, their goals. Uh, they become sort of a sounding board. And in many cases for the rest of the student's life, and the personal mentor is the one that is clearly the most significant and the one we spend the most time on. But you could come into the program and say, hey, I want to I want to develop an app and we will find you a mentor who has developed apps or I want to open a restaurant. Maybe not a good choice right now, but we will find you uh, somebody who is in the restaurant business uh, to become a mentor. We have mentors who help with coaching with uh, business uh, presentations. We have mentors that come and on any particular uh, endeavor within a business, hey, tell me about uh, accounting or legal or we'll find lawyers. And, uh, and that uh, I would say that mentoring is somebody in one of these videos said, you know, it's a family and it really is a family. And, and the, uh, the support that is available for anything that happens to a student while they're in the program is uh, personal. We, we take it upon ourselves to try and really help our students in any way they can and get as much of the, support from mentors and or the staff and our uh, our professors to make sure that the student has every shot they can to actually go start a business and or um, go get a good job pay off their student loans five years from now start a business the um, the requirements for mentoring are uh, not uh, particularly it isn't, you know, how many businesses you started, how much money have you raised? It is more about, are you committed to make a difference in a student's life? And will you make the commitment to come and be with that student to be engaged in a program? And I couldn't be more uh, proud of our mentors and the energy they put into the program. Okay. Um, and one last question, I hope I'm not taking up uh, too much of your time, but, uh, I know that you said that the Wolf Center does competitions. Uh, they did competitions with MIT. What do they? What do those competitions consist of? All over the lot. We have an internal business plan competition the first week in December. Uh, that is sort of the the end of the uh, intellectual property what the university gives us. Uh, we'll have seven or eight teams. Uh, we'll have judges, VCs, uh, and each team will make a presentation of their uh, technology. If at the end of that, uh, they want to say, I want to, I want to form a company and take this technology out into the market. That is an option that as long as the inventor, the University of Houston and the team wants to continue, they, the university will extend the exclusive license for that team to work with that technology. And during that final semester, 
that team then travels the country or the world trying to raise money and actually get their uh, co this company built around this technology out into the market. Uh, that is uh, a, um, a the chances of that, you know, hey, we really got the, I, I wouldn't encourage you to think of that as that's how it's going to work. That's what this program is there. We maybe have seven or eight of these companies that are surviving, but it is very possible that you will graduate and work with this technology as a side hustle and continue on to competitions all around. So those competitions, the way they work are that various colleges, various institutes, the government will have announced contests and they'll have prizes and it's open. And uh, so, you know, our students apply and uh, in the program, we pay for their travel to get them to these competitions uh, in the hope of they, uh, one, get a really great experience, and two is that they uh, can compete and be under pressure with real judges and real VCs to uh, experience things that they'll remember for the rest of their lives. And when they're pitching their own uh, deals or if this the one they're working with doesn't continue on, they will still have had a better experience than uh, they would have pretending that they were working with a technology or something. So a lot of those competitions, not every uh, student decides that they want to continue on with this. Uh, I want to go on the on the business plan uh, travels around. Some people want to focus on uh, Wolf Fest and or their own business, but um, the the competition is one that. Uh, we are we are good at competitions, and uh, we have a, a very very strong record when we send our teams anywhere to compete. Awesome! Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Cook. Dave, yep. Any questions that you have? Any comments? Anybody want to say anything before we uh, stick a fork in this and call it a day? Good luck, everyone. <laughs> All right, Mel, have you have a question? Yes, Amanda. Um, I noticed that the uh, spreadsheet that you put for uh, if anybody wants to attend one of the virtual classes for you guys uh, is filled up pretty quickly, but like within the first eight, eight hours. Uh, is there a, any opportunity that you guys will have it for maybe after the deadline of the applications, October or so? We typically have um, people sit in on the in-person classes during the semester, and obviously because of COVID, we cannot have them in person, um, and we do try to limit it. So we did not realize the September classes would fill up that quickly, and we are excited about that. We will be able to have you guys sit in on some October classes. No recordings allowed in these classes. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to see these first two weeks how it goes with four mm -hmm. students on the online courses, and then we might make an announcement that we're allowing five or six to sit in, or we're going to see how these goes and then just open it up for October. So although your applications are due September 25th, we do still allow you guys to sit in on classes in October as well until that announcement happens at the end. Um, so just keep looking at our social media and we will come up with uh, something else to help you guys who did not get in on those online classes. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, for Dave, we can get the other two classes, Dave. It doesn't have to be your class if you don't want us there. <laughs> Thank you, guys. I just want to say something. So we have a uh, Google document that has um, inf the contact information of some of the students. Uh, so feel free to reach out to any of us. It's going to be on the chat. Um, yeah. Thank you. Good luck. Um, I have a question. Is there any way that we can do like one on ones? Like if we have any questions with um, either you or Dave? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so feel free to just, yeah, good job. Feel free to just send us an email. Um, sorry, guys, I am tutoring right now. <laughs> tutoring children. It's okay. Right now. Yeah, um, yes. No, um, I'm sending my email in the chat right now, okay. but to set up one on ones with Dave and myself, um, you can just email me. Our okay. okay, my email is now in the chat. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I think I see Alexis. You have a question? 
Uh, yeah, so my question was I kind of wanted to know more about how the mentor uh, was partnered with the student once they were in the program. Because um, I know different people like have uh, different like business ideas. So I just wanted to know how the mentor was best suited for each student. It, it is something that we spend a lot of time and, and we argue and but essentially what we try to do is um, either to find people that we think are going to be um, aligned perfectly and these two, these two people are going to have a wonderful time together or in some cases uh, we say, hey, this particular student would benefit uh, by having someone who had a uh, complementary but different skill or attitude or what have you. And so um, at, the, at the heart of this is, is really, um, we just get, if you get 40 good students and 40 good mentors, you can almost throw them together and, and doesn't matter and good things will happen. But we do spend a lot of time. We have uh, uh, Berkman assessments. Every, every mentor gets a Berkman. We consider that when we put the, with the matching together and uh, it's, there's no magic to it. Uh, we put every student uh, down on a table uh, we walk around with the mentor and then I do a match. Amanda does a match then we argue uh, <clears throat> and, and we shift and uh, until we come up with the, the best match uh, that, we, uh, that we can, knowing what we know, putting together the best we can. And that personal mentor is really, really an important uh, it's an important core element of the program and we really spend a lot of time um, trying to get that right. The most important thing we do is picking the right 35 or 40 students and then beyond that um, every year we have more people wanting to be mentors than we have students to match with them. So um, we try to use everybody who wants to volunteer but uh, the personal mentor is one we spend a lot of time trying to get it right. And there is not an exact formula. It's more like an art of um, what I, and, and that's why we don't match you with the mentor till February. <clears throat> we get to know you, figure out uh, who you are. Uh, we know the mentors pretty well. And so before we match you, we try to make sure that we know enough about both sides of the equation uh, before we put you together. But it, it is, um, it's uh, daunting to try and figure out what those relationships look like and anticipate the value that's going to come out of them. But uh, we take it very seriously and it's uh, a very laborious, uh, but uh, worthy uh, project. I think we're good, Dave. Okay, so um, thank you all for uh, coming to this info session. My hope is that every one of you applies and uh, there are so many kids in the program right now who would tell you that they did not think they had a chance to get in or uh, what have you. And I would, uh, I think just going through the process is a healthy thing to do but I would encourage as many of you as um, really think that this is something you could commit your life to, to go ahead and, and throw your hat in and let's see if this is a fit. <clears throat> if you do decide to apply, uh, I hope that you will uh, know that we will treat you with every respect. I watch every video and uh, to Amanda's point earlier, uh, you know, try to make it something that is revealing as to who you really are, but also uh, try and uh, make it fun. Give me, uh, give us something that we'll enjoy watching and, and uh, so forth. But um, whatever you put into this, I promise you, we are working on the other side to give you every opportunity to have a, a real shot at getting into this program. We're kind of disadvantaged this year because 
we didn't have the in-person Wolf Fest, which would typically have been an opportunity for the senior class to get to know the junior class. Uh, and so it is, it's more important than ever that um, you do well on your essays and you make sure that you connect with as many people in the senior class as you can. Each senior is allowed to write three letters of recommendation for the juniors and we take that into consideration. But wherever you are in the process, um, I encourage you to uh, give this a shot and something that I believe is, uh, will have an enormous return and, and the ability to change your life. So thanks for coming today. If you decide to apply, I appreciate it. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the interview process, but thank you. Thank you, Dave. Okay, love you guys.